Hi there, this is Connie, and I am back with another installment of my Paranormal Romance or Urban Fantasy Obsession. And I'm going to talk to you today about Laurel K. Hamilton, um, her Anita Blake books, and this is the edition 7 and 8. And I'm, this is the book that I'm talking about. It is another omnibus, and omnibus, of course, means uh, several collections in one volume. And this has got two books in it this time. The, the first two omnibuses that I talked about had three each. So um, that held one, two, and three, four, five, and six. And this has got seven and eight in it. The author, again, is Louis Royal. Get that up close there. So it's not glaring. And here is the full picture here. It's kind of glaring a little bit. I'm sorry about that. Okay, and this one is called Black Moon Inn, and like I said, it I'm going to talk a little bit about Laurel, and I, I'm i sorry this is a repeat. I do this every time, but this is for new people if they are watching, um, watching this, you know, if they've just finished these two books or something and they want to hear about them. Okay, so Laurel K. Hamilton was born February 19th, 1963, and she's an American fantasy and romance writer. <clears throat> she is best known as the author of two series of stories. Her New York Times bestselling Anita Blake Vampire Hunter series centers on Anita Blake, a professional zombie raiser, vampire executioner, and supernatural consultant for the police, which includes novels, short story collections, and comic books. Six million copies of Anita Blake novels are in print. Her Mary Gentry series centers on Mary Je Meredith Gentry, uh, Princess of the Unseelie Court of Fairy, a private detective facing repeated assassination attempts. Both fantasy series follow their protagonists as they gain in power and deal with the dangerous realities of worlds in which creatures of legends live. Lord. I'm knocking stuff over. Laurel K. Hamilton was born Laurel K. Klein in Herbal Springs, Arkansas, but grew up in Sims, Indiana with her grandmother, Laurel Gentry. And that's all I'm going to say about that. She is married. Her husband's name is John. They have a daughter. I don't remember what her name is, though. But anyway, this is Laurel right there. All right, so the first book I'm going to talk to you about today is Burnt Offerings, and that is number seven in the series. And and I'm really sorry about the black and white again, but um, I did get a little color this time. But the my my ink must be going bad because this is uh, Burnt Offerings. It's got like a a broken light bulb, and that's what that is. And it's in this really pretty kind of violet color. Okay. So anyway, you can't trust anyone who sleeps with monsters. That's what Anita Blake has always believed. But now she is sharing a bed with the master vampire of the city. So when an arsonist began to target vampire victims, the creatures of the night turned to their former enemy. For now, only the executioner could save them from the inferno. It's often hard to tell the good from the evil. Just ask Anita Blake. She seems to be developing a soft spot in her heart for vampires, one in particular. So when the arsonist fire began licking at St. Louis's undead, it's up to Anita to save the very monster she's sworn to destroy. That is Burnt Offerings. All right. The eighth book in the series is Blue Moon. And Richard was an alpha werewolf. It's his only serious flaw. We'd broken up after I'd seen him eat somebody. Still, you never forget your ex fiance And when Richard calls Anita Blake at 3 in the morning, she knows it won't be good news. It seems Richard has gotten himself thrown in jail on a rape charge. But Anita knows that though he is a monster, Richard's no rapist. And it's up to her to prove his innocence before the blue moon creates even bigger problems for Richard. 
Vampire hunter and prenatural expert Anita Blake must help her ex-fiancé out of a false race rape charge. Time is of the essence, however, as Anita's ex-flame is a werewolf, and if he's not out of jail before the full moon rises, he's in for some big problems. Okay, so that is, and I will show you this, and it, it really isn't this pink color. It is all this, this really pretty blue. It's just my ink is goofy, goofy, goofy. Just driving me nuts, but I just, I can't see spending $35 on ink right now. So, all right. So anyway, this is Black Moon, like I said, Black Moon in, And let's read what it says on the inside cover. Uh, there was a soft sound from behind us. The were leopards were climbing off the bed, gliding toward us on human feet, but moving as if there were muscles in their legs and hips and torsos that didn't exist in time. Relax. The were leopards are the good guys. They're just being affectionist. In the first two collections of Anita Blake novels, readers met every kind of furred, fanged, and tough-to-kill critter under the moon. Now, in two brand new books, Anita is back, and she's taken, taking on the Vampire high, high Council and a whole range of enemies, new and old, including her libido. So no matter which leopard pard, wolf pack, or vampire call, that's the word for a bunch of vampires, you're, in, you're a member, I'm so sorry, you're a member of Walk Softly Around This Woman, her browning 9mm automatic is handy, and her silver knives are sharp as Laurel K. Hamilton's writing, and that cuts to the very heart of dark adventure every time. So this is Black Moon Inn. I'm talking about Burnt Offerings and the Blue Moon. And if you've read them, let me know what you think, and I will talk to you very soon. Bye-bye.